Hello, welcome, beautiful family, friends, acquaintances, strangers who are now no longer strangers. Welcome to my brand new podcast. <laughs> what am I calling it? The Round Table, right? The Round Table with Sarah E. Carey. Uh, I just want to welcome you. This is the first episode of this new project. So, uh, oh my goodness, it is very much all the things that come with a new thing. Um, so I'm definitely a little bit nervous and looking forward to exploring this creative endeavor. And, you know, for those of you, so welcome to the round table. First of all, I'm really excited to see where this creative project goes. Um, I have little idea. I'm going to sort of be very much in collaboration with the podcast itself as an entity and see where it sort of wants to go. Um, but really, you know, I landed on this word of round table because I do want to have many guests on the podcast and many different voices. Uh, but I do feel like this mm, vehicle of the round table, right? What is it? Like King Arthur's round table where like the knights gather and lay their swords down and just have a conversation about strategizing or whatever it might be uh, is very alluring to me. Even if I'm sitting at this round table by myself, like I am today, right? Today, it's just me at the round table, uh, but it is a place to come and put swords down, right? Even if you're listening to the recordings of the round table, right? This is a place to come and put the swords down and talk about anything that we might want to. Um, so that's sort of where this project is being born from, is this circular table of congregation of thoughts and ideas and how to move forward in this world and what even is this world of illusion, right? And so my hope for this podcast, hi, welcome to the inaugural episode. I just want to lay down a little bit of framework as, as to where my mind is sort of at in terms of the brick laying and foundation setting of this podcast and also a little bit about what journey I've been on recently, especially for those of you who have been following me um, and even, uh, you know, used to listen to the old podcast that I had and why I've decided to just start a completely new project and leave the old podcast uh, to let it die, uh, why I made that decision and that feels like enough to do today, right? So let's lay some bricks. You know, I, well, I guess it's all going to kind of bleed together, right? So I have been in an existential place for the last couple of years that I can really only best quantify as breaking through illusion and breaking through illusion on a multitude of layers. Um, I realize that's very vague, but you know, for those of you who do know me and those of you who don't, and this is your introduction to me, I'm what you might call a conspiracy theorist, although that terminology doesn't really resonate with me. But so much of the last podcast that I did was really speaking out against oppression in so many ways and the oppression that I'm seeing in our collective shared reality. Um, and while that is still something that I'm sure is going to come up in this podcast of, you know, my perspective on the oppressions of our world, right? I'm sure that will come up. You know, we live in a capitalistic dystopia, right? <laughs> like, you know, I'm certainly not going to shy away from those conversations, but I don't necessarily want it to be the focus. Um, more so, you know, the places that I've been in existentially have really been coming to terms with the illusory quality of our shared reality, that this is a big weird dream that we're sharing. And 
not just to visit that place, right? Like visiting that place of illusion and the, you know, embodiment of that. I am a dream character. And, you know, to not only visit that aspect of myself, you know, in plant medicine ceremonies or, you know, in difficult times or, you know, just getting hit by a freight train by it, but to live my life in an integrated way of being able to see life as a dream and integrating that perspective in a really beautiful way, as opposed to other ways that it's come into my life of life is but a dream and that like rocking my world, right? Or being something that I've been able to access in plant medicine ceremonies or when I'm in the throes of despair. Uh, but to bring that truth, that life is a dream into my daily waking reality um, has really been my work over the last year since I've been quiet and not doing too much podcasting. Uh, that's been the work I've been doing. And so what that's been allowing me to do that while I have the perspectives that I have of our shared reality that, you know, we live under the boot of the American empire. This is a slave industrial complex, you know, and all of the implications of what comes with all of that, um, you know, the discrepancy of wealth inequality that exists in our world, like all of that is still very real to me. And I feel a step removed from it personally, even though it does still impact my life. I do still drink water that comes from the city and drive on roads, you know, like there's really no escaping the matrix, you know, except in terms of a frame of mind. But even then, right, like it is part of this dream, you know, and so coming to terms with all of that has allowed me to not be so emotionally impacted and derailed by the horrors present when this dream becomes a nightmare, right? Like when this dream becomes a nightmare. Um, so that has been my, uh, I could expand on that forever and always, which is why I have a whole podcast, right? So that I can continue to talk about these ideas as they come through me with, um, you know, hopefully some grace, but also clarity to be able to speak on the dream state, you know, and I, I think that there's a misconception that to see life as a dream and to sit so firmly with feet planted in the truth of the reality that life is a dream in no way, in my experience, diminishes the beauty of it and in fact makes me even more appreciative for the dream that I am living because there's an understanding that if it's a dream it's fleeting so in so many ways it's like being in alignment with death you know living you know, not necessarily live every day like it's your last, right? Because that sounds like burnout, right? If, you have, if I, every day is my last, right? If you're like jumping out of airplanes, I don't know, I would do that anyway. If today was my last day, I would really just cuddle with my dog and lay in the sun, kind of like what I do every day. But um, so I guess then that adage really does work. Just what, what would you do on your last day? I would do exactly what I'm doing today. Uh, but um, sorry, I, got, I'm, I derailed myself there. Uh, you know, to live life with death as a friend, you know, side, side by side, hand in hand, you know, what choices would I make? What brave thing would I do? What, how, what vulnerable things would I do? You know, if, if this, if death came knocking, right? It, it's sort of the same seeing life through the lens of a dream, right? But if life is a dream, it's fleeting and a beautiful, precious dream, sometimes a nightmare, right? So I find myself more ironically, more present with life, the more I see it as a dream. My mantra, this was a couple months ago, I should bring it back. I used to grab my dog, Huck, if you're new to the podcast or this podcast, you'll hear me talk about Huck a lot. Huckleberry is a very good boy. Uh, but I would grab Huck and cuddle him and just say, it's great 
to share a dream with you. I am so happy and grateful to share a dream with you, sweet Huckleberry. You know, what a, what a great gift. You know, it's like having a good dream. You know, you ever have like a really good dream? It's like, dang, that was great. You get to visit with a loved one who's died or something like, wow, it was great to like have that dream with my grandmother or whatever, you know? Well, that's how I feel a lot of the time about life. You know, it's great to have a dream with Huck. What a great dream. And so now in this moment, it's great to have a dream with all of you. It's great to share this brief moment in time. It's a good dream. Just want to have a good dream. That's it. To the best of my ability. Right? And how do you have a good dream? Well, you got to face the shit. You got to face it. You got to go through it. It's the only goddamn way. You know, to be in a place of peace means unlearning a lot of violence. How do you unlearn violence? Got to go right through it. I don't know. <laughs> right. So that, right, is really the foundation of this podcast, right? Talking about the dream state. But then too, right, and this is also very much a foundation we're laying bricks for this podcast is, okay, so if life is a dream, right? I can do whatever the fuck I want, right? There will be consequences to all of my actions, right? Uh, but sort of like, how do I sort of like have a lucid dream, right? Where it's less the experience of the universe, like thrashing me around, right? Uh, and more, how can I plod and plan right? And sort of be, have without like a vice grip of control, right? To have like a nice, open, easy hands to allow the flow of the universe, right? The universe is going to do its thing, right? It's going to flow, um, you know, to sort of release the tiller, right? That's one of my favorite expressions, release the tiller and just, you know, lean into the skid, right? You ever driving and you hit ice, what's the advice, right? If you are driving down the road and you hit ice, the best advice is you, lean into the skid. You don't, you, Jesus take the wheel, right? If you try to do anything to your wheel, your tires while you're driving and you hit ice, you're going to make it worse. Just lean into the skid, right? So having myself be open to the flows of the universe, but also being in a position of collaboration, right? And it being an intelligent human being, right? Like here, here are the qualities that I possess as a human person. Like, how can I be intelligent in my creation of life, right? Like, super cool to be a human, you know? Like, super cool, you know, on planet Earth. Like, planet Earth is cool, you know? Um, so how can I be in a, in a genius state, right? How can I be in a genius state? If I'm a tree, if I'm a plant, if I'm a coyote, if I'm a person, right? Like, how can I come to my fullest expression of my humanity and the uniqueness of what I am? So that for me starts to become a question of, okay, it's all just a dream. It's all fleeting. Sometimes it's a good dream. Sometimes it's a bad dream, but how can I manufacture the best dream possible for myself? Just the dream that I would want to be living. You know, what do I want to see the character of Sarah do next? You know, what, what do I want to see her do? How do I want her to feel, right? If I'm sort of like a step removed from myself, you know, that would invite me to make some really brave choices and hard choices too. Walking away from things that are beautiful and sacred and just not serving me anymore, you know? None of this is easy, you know? Bravery is not easy. Courage is not easy. But we like movies where the character behaves bravely, you know? So in my experience, how to sort of master this character, this archetype, how do I master this character? Well, in my experience, working with Ayurveda, which is India's indigenous medicine, Working with Ayurveda in terms of how to create rhythms in the body, 
how to eat, how to sleep, hygiene, certain self-care rituals and practices, how to create a pace of life, right? So pacing in life, um, you know, this 5,000 year old beautiful indigenous medicine from across the, you know, across the ocean, across the world is really in, in my studies and in my learning and in my integration of medicine has been the most effective thing for me in terms of mastering this character in terms of creating safety for myself, right? The safety in routines and rhythms and rhythms that bring me into a place of creativity, that bring me into a place of making art and having, you know, uh, unique thoughts and, you know, being in a place of being able to, you know, go out into the woods and pick wild plants and turn it into pasta, you know? And when I'm in a place of a really solid and beautiful rhythm and to also have clarity of mind, right? And to have just an easy, good humor, you know, life is challenging and it's hard. You know, the structure of our society is fucking weird, you know, like it's not easy. So what can I do to best give myself the opportunity to rest, reboot, heal, and especially for me too, following the hormonal cycles of being, having female hormones, right? And, and being in a, in a state of production with that as well and aligning my productivity with my hormonal cycle. So all of this is really just to lay the brick and foundation of, yeah, life is a dream, period. <laughs> If life is a dream, I'm a dream character, how do I best take care of this dream character, right? So that I can have the best dream possible. You know, I also recognize I'm throwing around a lot of words today, like best, none of this is intended to be like achievement oriented, you know, but it is about having an exquisite experience of life. And that's a belief that I hold really firmly is that it is my birthright and your birthright to have a peaceful, exquisite, gratifying, you know, beautiful experience of life, you know, and that comes with a lot of blood and guts and, you know, again, it ain't always pretty, but it's, and no matter what, right? Like it's always beautiful, but managing anxiety and mood disorders and so many of the things, you know, chronic illnesses that plague our world. Like, you know, I don't want to go so far as to say these things are choices because I recognize in so many ways we live in a society that is designed for us to be sick. So I would never want to diminish my own experiences or any other, anyone else's and say, okay, well, you chose that because that seems really diminishing, but we can choose something different. We can choose something other than chronic anxiety. We can choose something other than staying in relationships that are harming us. You know, we, we have a lot of choice, but we don't always have easy access to information and communities that bring forth the best in us, you know, and I will also say one of the really big changes that I've gone through in the last year is that I really put down the mantle that it's my responsibility to save the world. You know, so all of this is coming from a place of I'm just doing what's right for me and brighten, brightening my little corner of the world in Watertown, Connecticut, and with the people that I love and just sending out messages from my kitchen round table like that's it you know I'm not trying to take down the man or change the winds of oppression you know sometimes I like to talk about the boot of the American empire because it is so shadowy and people often wonder why do I have so much anxiety well you know you do live under the boot of an empire and <laughs> that might have something to do with the anxiety you know, and to be able to move and work through that and come to terms with the fact that we very much live on a slave mining colony, you know, and coming to terms with that and still being the brightest, shiniest flower that we can be, you know, and that's it. And that's what this is. Um, sending out smoke signals, right, from my little corner of the world and 
hopefully you resonate with it. And if not, God bless you. See you next time. You know, I feel like I could say a lot more, uh, but that's really where I've been. Oh, why I've just, so I decided to start a brand new podcast because the foundation with which I started the old one is not aligned with the foundation of the new one. And even the title, you know, the title of this one, the round table, you know, the round table sending out smoke signals um, is very resonant, I think, long-term. Uh, so hopefully this project, we'll see what it does, right? But hopefully this project exists for a long, long time. Uh, so that being said, because we are just beginning, if you or someone you know, wants to come and have a conversation about the dream state, about being a dream character, or anything that's important to you. I'm happy to have you on. Um, so let me know, is there anything else I need to say? No, I will end with a quote, my favorite, one of my favorites from Walt Whitman. He says, re-examine everything you've been told. Dismiss whatever insults your soul. That's not a good foundation for a podcast. I don't know what the fuck is, right? Re-examine everything you've ever been told. Dismiss whatever insults your soul. I love you guys so much. <laughs> cool. Here we go.